Now, Frank Sinatra, when he's saying that I've got you under my skin, remember that? I do not think he was talking about this or my next guest. This guy has a computer chip literally implanted under his skin, and he asked for it. He wanted it. It's called a radio frequency identification device, or RFID. Why did he do it? Well, we thought we'd ask him. Mikey starts with us now, owner of a chip in his hand. Mikey, why'd you do this? Well, I had a lot of reasons for doing the implant, but the most appealing reason for doing it was simple convenience in my life, that if I had this RFID tag, I could start replacing my door locks for electric door locks, I could stop typing my password at the computer, and I would be able to modify custom electronics I build to allow secure access where only I can wipe my hand to activate. All right, so this is a step above fingerprint technology, right? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, biometrics, like fingerprint or retina scans, um, have their own advantages. They really are unique to you. Um, RFID, today, there are many types that are easy to clone. It's actually not that secure uh, in many forms. But at the same time, it's nice because it's really a wireless, no-contact technology. I can just simply wave my hand rather than actually touching things and lining up my thumbprints right or getting my eye scanned and bending over for that. So it is a little bit different in how you would interact with the scanners. Mikey, I'm sure there are a lot of people watching right now who think you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be the case, but I actually think that RFID is already a big part of our lives. You know, we already see a lot of press about the passport issues and those being RFID tagged. There's quite a bit of consumer goods that have been coming out, such as clothing, um, license plates. Uh, there's just so much in the RFID world to make it pervasive today that um, I think we'll see more of this activity in various forms. I was reading, Mikey, that you come from a family pretty steeped in technology. I'm not saying they're nerds or your family nerds, but pretty smart folks, yourself included, huh? Well, yeah, my mother uh, teaches IT uh, classes about using productivity applications like Microsoft applications, and Grandpa was also into some IBM mainframe work. So uh, I have a history of this, and actually my parents are very understanding about this sort of implant, and were kind of interested for themselves to some degree. Have they done it? They have not. Um, in fact, I haven't convinced any relatives or friends to do this in point yet. <laughs> but it's not All about right. convincing them. I see. Um, you know, some are going to look at this too, Mike, and say, you're a nerd. I read your biography. You don't read like a nerd. But nerds do this sort of thing, or do they? There are others. Um, I have about 20 folks that I've found on the internet that have done the RFID implants on their own versus going to a commercial company and having them implant for you for maybe medical purposes or something like that. Um, so there, there are some peers of mine out there in the world that are doing the same kind of work. And to be honest, I actually followed in their foot tracks, um, you know, footsteps uh, more so than doing this on my own. All right, now, but I'm told, Mikey, that maybe there are 30, 35 people worldwide who've done this. Is the number that small? It is for the do-it-yourself implants. Um, there is a lot of people doing this through hospitals um, for Alzheimer's cases. Um, there are, of course, pets that have been doing this for years. So I would say the number is over 2,000 for commercially implanted people using the Verichip tags, which is different from my own. All right, Mikey, good having you. Hope you stay well. Keep that thing clean or whatever you have to do. Thank you very much. Thank you.